This presentation is a summary of a number of studies that were conducted at various locations in the world about intensity of halogen light curing units used in dental offices. This map here shows you that studies were conducted in North America, South America, the Middle East, uh, Japan, and as far as Australia. I'm going to quickly take you through the one that was conducted in Toronto and two papers about it were published back in 2005. I worked with a, a group of other uh, researchers and uh, colleagues in this one, 100 dental offices in the greater Toronto area, and we tested 213 halogen light units. We used a simple light meter, and we also polymerized resin composite specimens, uh, which we later uh, determined their relative hardness. This bar chart shows you the distribution of light intensity as found from the 213 uh, light units that we tested. As you can see, there is a wide range of intensity, starting with zero going as much as 1,000. The findings, we found that about 4% of the lights had intensity below 200. 8% had intensity below 300, 41% had intensity below 500, 22% from 500 and below 700, and only 25% were greater than 700. We also looked at the correlation between light intensity and the age of the light unit, and we found that the newer the light unit, the higher the intensity. As we progressed in time, the intensity gradually reduced, and for those units which were between 11 to 20 years old, the uh, average intensity was just over 400 milliwatts per centimeter square. The second study I was involved with was conducted in Salvador, Brazil. Here we tested 120 halogen units, which were found in 100 dental offices, and the range of intensity was from 10 to 1,000 milliwatts per centimeter square, again a very wide range. 56 of the units had intensity less than 300 milliwatts per centimeter square, and the heat glare values ranged from 10 to 250. Age of the light units aged from 1 to 21 years, and none of the dental offices I visited had a light meter. You can see here the distribution we found in the units in Salvador. Number of units versus intensity. Again, the majority, big number, more than 30 of these units had intensity between 0 and 100 and uh, as the intensity increased, the number of units decreased. But this shows you a breakdown of the percentage of light units with intensity less than 300 milliwatts per centimeter square. In Texas, it was 55%. In Tokyo, 25%. Australia, 45%. Toronto, 12%. Salvador, the highest, 68%. In Cairo was 46 percent. Bargi in 1994 and Pilo in 1999, they described lights with intensity less than 300 milliwatts per centimeter square as inadequate, unusable, and unsuitable. Further, Rugiberg in 1994 stated that lights with intensity less than 233 milliwatts per centimeter square should not be used because of their poor cure characteristics. For ideal results, increment thickness of one millimeter should be cured for 60 seconds 
with intensity greater than 400 milliwatts per centimeter square. In the second part of our study conducted here in Toronto, where we actually polymerized specimens uh, of composites at the dental offices that we visited, we were able to subject them after one day to NOOP microhardness testing. So we had specimens made from two different composites. With one of them, the specimen, some, some specimens were cured for 20 seconds, others were cured for 40 seconds. For the composite material 0.4, which was cured for 20 seconds, this is the different relative hardness values that we were able to measure with light units at the different dental offices. You can see the numbers are all over. Ideally, if the dentist is properly polymerizing their composite restoration, you should be able to get a relative hardness value over 80%. As you can see here, the majority of the specimens we prepared using the light units that the dentist used in dental offices produced relative hardness values below this 80%. When we increased exposure time to 40 seconds, things improved a little bit. However, still the majority of the specimens we had had relative hardness values below the 80% level. Same was found when we used the other composite material and the specimens were cured for 20 seconds. You would notice here only few specimens managed to score numbers of relative hardness ratios above the 80%. In conclusion, I would like to state that a considerable number of halogen light curing units used in many global locations are emitting light with intensity well below the minimum required level. Composite restorations made with such lights would be expected to perform poorly and need frequent replacement. Dentists worldwide need to follow strict measures in their offices to ensure proper polymerization of composite restorations. Thank you for listening.